Today's episode of The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown is brought to you by Jennifer C. at HomeLifeCultureLink.com Nino Saimeka at MortgageGodfather.ca and Jewelry Forever at JewelryForever.ca Enjoy the show. Broadcasting live from Glenmore Record Studios in Toronto, this is The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown, your Sunday morning talk show with interesting guests, live musical performances, and the most fun you can fit in your coffee cup. Hosted by Scott Dion Brown and Regine Elena, this This is is The the Sit Down Down with with Scott Scott Dion Dion Brown. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 150, 150. It's one of those milestone episodes, everybody. Episode 150 of The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown. I'm here with a frothy latte, although there's something slightly different about it today. It's got some cinnamon on top. And the reason there's cinnamon on it is thanks to the greatest co-host in the galaxy, the one, the only... Regina Elena. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I wasn't sure where you were going, Scott, with that. So I was like, wait, what? TikTok. Because you, <laughs> Regine sent me a TikTok where... Actually, it's not exactly what I did, but you, the TikTok you sent me was this person actually... M- in your milk frother, you add the cinnamon before you froth the milk, so it so becomes it's all mixed together. yeah, like s- cinnamon froth. Mm-hmm. But I don't actually have a milk frother. I have because mine's like a you know it's the oh yeah steam, you're a bougie the, that's right yeah, the steam arm. I, I don't know if that could probably work. Like I could stir in the cinnamon with the with the milk and then froth it or like whatever mm-hmm. steam it. And that might that might work, but I haven't tried that yet. But there's cinnamon now in this, and it's quite nice. There you go. Thanks, TikTok. <laughs> Thanks, TikTok. <laughs> and uh, yes, everybody, it is. It is indeed our Thanksgiving special um, uh, for our American viewers. It is. It is Canadian. It's <laughs> Thanksgiving in Canada right now. I know Americans have theirs in November. November. Uh-huh. It's too too close to Christmas. You guys should move it. It's too far. It's too it's, it, yeah. Yeah, but then if you think about that, then our Thanksgiving is too close to Halloween. You're right. It's like um, our, our our Thanksgiving. It's like it it's it it kicks off, you know, spooky month. It's kind of like that. Pumpkin month. <laughs> Pumpkin month. Spooky month. Hello, everyone. Hey, who we got in the chat? David Jose. Hello. Good morning. Welcome to the stream, Ruben. It's been a while. Yes, I do remember you, Ruben. Of course, I remember you. I almost beat you in Brawlhalla. Almost. Almost. And Max is here too. Hello. And Jesus is here as well. Good morning to you all. Please boop the like button. Boop. Boop that like button as we start episode 150. And uh, do you think we should just bring in our guest? Or yeah, what are you saying, Regine? I was going to say 150. We're like 150 away from 200. Why does it seem so far away yet so close? I know. 150 that's a that's a big accomplishment i think oh my god that means our three-year mark is coming up (laughs) whoa that's true i know three years of doing this show amazing (laughs) bye scott (laughs) (laughs) and this is the end everybody (laughs) and it's over it's over but i think we should um we should bring in our guest yeah um because uh well he's he's waiting you know (laughs) Our guest today, ladies and gentlemen, is a uh, uh, a producer, director, writer, uh, filmmaker. Uh, we met recently at the Gen Con Film Festival. We participated in several panels together, mm. and um, and uh, actually, for the first time in a while, he is also uh, based in Toronto. Whoa! We actually have a Toronto guest today. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been a while. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm sit-down welcome to Courtney James. Hello. How we doing? 
Nice, wow. uh, nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks so. for joining us. Thanks for matching with me today. I of love when course. Scott feels so like unincluded. Well, <laughs> when a plan comes together, a plan comes together. So it's Great okay, Scott. We alike. still love you. <laughs> we still love you. I feel so, so left out. Nice. And on, I should have known it was the thanks Thanksgiving theme. Uh, well, you got the fancy me. mug. I That's don't what I do fancy too. Mug. You do too? Okay. I do too. I've got a boring glass of Perrier because if I drink any more coffee, I'm going to have the shakes on camera. So hmm. I'm an early riser and I've already killed a pot of coffee. So okay. yeah. no more That's coffee good. for you. You're none done for the day. None for me. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. So. Uh, one thing I did want to ask you about, I saw a, a, an Instagram story. Okay. I, uh, earlier this week, and I believe it was you <laughs> leaping over the hood of an LAPD police vehicle in slow motion. Is that was that was that what I saw? That that would be correct. It was uh, just a uh, you know uh, that that old gag where you just you know are out and about. The police are chasing you and uh, you take care of business and you get the rock out of town. I was actually working on a TV show. Mm. I can't say what show, but okay. uh, sometimes I like to put little uh, little daily uh, blurps of uh, what I'm up to uh, in the world of film and television. But it was a lot of fun. It was, uh, it was kind of a wild and wacky, uh, wacky stunt, but nobody got hurt. And, How uh, many cups of coffee did you have before that? <laughs> probably, probably five. I'm, oh. uh, but I, I find I get into kind of more of the Americano, you know, the espresso as the day goes on. So it's a little less caffeine. Ooh. You, you got to stay away from uh, that. Yeah, but then you get brand, hit especially with Tim Hortons. Oh my God, that's But stuff. then you get hit with the espresso, and then it's just like, whoa, it's a whole other energy. <laughs> whole other energy it feels good and you know gets you ready for the day to you know risk risk uh life and limb so but uh yeah it was a fun week doing uh doing some stunts on this uh, new upcoming show so i wish i could tell you about it but uh if we do another interview in like six or seven months i can let no you know then. so but yeah yeah well it was it was a very impressive jump i will say that well thank it was you like it was like that was like some serious air like well i didn't want to get hit by the car so you know you <laughs> got to do what you got to do so but uh, i was very lucky because sometimes that doesn't go well and mm. uh yeah you end up uh face planting on the pavement and okay let's do that again <laughs> and no. uh, you get up and take care he of business did it so. for the gram ladies and gentlemen we did it for the gram <laughs> we did it for entertainment so there you go don't yeah. try that at home <laughs> no and uh it'll look pretty cool what you didn't see is there was drones there's a couple other uh camera angles kind of going on so yeah i think it's uh it's gonna make me look cool and so we'll talk to I you in what april <laughs> <laughs> something like that so got it but yeah it's a lot of fun it's a it's a wild job uh doing the stunt stuff i'm trying not to do as much anymore i i've been kind of uh you know focusing on the writing directing producing aspect but i also i stand in which uh, i've been also doing over the past couple weeks uh on various shows and yeah i just like being around it i'm a i'm a big fan mm -hmm. of uh the industry and just storytelling in general so it's a lot of fun i'm 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 very privileged uh to kind of get to participate in this uh, wild world of making tv for a living so it's pretty cool nice. it's pretty cool yeah be I, I always feel like every every time anytime you get to be on set it always just feels like i just feel like it's like the best place in the oh world. my god i it, i still get the goosebumps even though you know you do certain jobs and you're doing them like say the stand-in job which for me as a as a director i love doing because you get you're right there you're right on the floor you get to watch all these other kind of directors work uh famous actors or just even great character actors and just kind of watch how these scenes get built and you're 
and you're right mm -hmm. there and it's it's hard not to take notes and and get inspired and want to do your own stuff so they're long it's long hours and you can get like i i've done shows where you sit and you're working on it for four to seven months yeah. and it can be you know quite tiring and quite repetitious but yeah i still get excited about it and it's it's great what is a stand-in for someone like myself who's not in the industry well a stand-in <laughs> is almost like a, a glorified mannequin that oh. moves for other actors so they don't have to sit during the long boring process of lighting which sometimes can take up to 45 minutes depending on you know how specific a look they want to mm. do so i basically go in i'll watch the actors rehearse do their scene and then essentially you do all the blocking for uh the dp the director of photography so this allows the actor to relax get psyched up do what they need to do and then we kind of go in and do just the the important stuff but the stuff that takes a long time to prep and and set up so yeah it's it's been an interesting job i've been doing it for over 20 years now so wow. I, and you know getting to see a lot of different types of productions you know from you know super independent all the way up to you know huge blockbuster stuff like suicide squad or you know big hollywood blockbusters oh. so like the particular show uh that i was working on i could you know i can mention i was i was just working on star trek uh, strange new worlds that just kind of wrapped up here in toronto so that'll be airing but i i'll stand in for like spock and some of the other actors uh cool. throughout uh the season and then they'll have like two units going on so sometimes you know you just get bits and pieces you know you're on a second unit uh, i've done that i did just recently did a show called reacher which they had two full-time units going on it's uh, based on the jack reacher books and that's a lot of fun you know again but you're only getting to see bits and pieces as as we're putting together the story so i'm excited to actually see that i've, I've read the scripts but it looks pretty exciting to see what they're gonna launch i guess in january february and then i'll usually when you stand in two you'll also photo double so i've been lots of people's hands shoulders <laughs> necks feet nice. So people you wouldn't expect either because, you know, uh, the magic of movie making. Uh, like, okay, what is the most random that we wouldn't get? Uh, random, I have been uh, Anna Paquin's uh, shoulder uh, in Alias Grace. It was a mini series. They needed just a, a shot. She was done for the day. <laughs> So I just put on kind of her <laughs> shawl just so they could catch a little bit of movement. Do you have feminine shoulders or does she have masculine shoulders? No, she's quite feminine, quite sexy, <laughs> smaller than me. So you put us together, uh, it's kind of a, uh, an odd uh, pairing. But sometimes with these with these certain shows, like they only have a budget for like two stand-ins. So you'll have a, a guy and a girl. Mm -hmm. And then we pretty much stand in for everybody. So. I've st stood in for a dog. I've stood in <laughs> for, you know, just the most random stuff. So it's just, they need something to light. And then, uh, yeah, so, but it's fun. And it's a, it's a great way to, it creates freedom too in my schedule because you work a daily routine or you work in these kind of three to four month uh, windows and then you can take some time to kind of work on your stuff. Mm -hmm. You're meeting people. I'm a very social person, like right now with the whole pandemic, it's just with us, uh, you know, talking through Zoom. That's like, I watch my wife every day uh, working for a company with clients, you know, in the in the States, all over Canada, but she just sits in the office on Zoom because they're mm -hmm. not allowed to go back to the office. So mm -hmm. it's great to be around people and the, with all the safety protocols and everything, we, we still can do that. So yeah, this, the whole social experiment of, filming and making TV and all that stuff. I love it. And yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I know I'm kind of going on a tangent, but uh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, being on set was my, especially earlier in the pandemic, that was like my first social interaction with other people too. It was so, it felt so weird, but yeah, so like 
Oh, this is nice. Oh, wow. I can, nice. I'm just sitting next to people and I can talk to you. I, I forgot what this feels like. I know. It's wild. It's wild where, uh, what you get used to. Because I think mm -hmm. of it, it's like been over, well over a year. You know, we're approaching year two. And yeah. uh, I don't see any end in sight with masks or, you know, constant test. Like I'm tested three to five times a week. Because oh. especially if you do, and if you do multiple shows, you're getting tested twice a day because everyone has to have their own set of tests. Yeah. So like, I think wow. Thursday I, I was doing two shows this week. So yeah, I've had uh, uh, six tests all together wow. for just working on these two shows. So do you find that you get used to getting COVID tested? Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, okay. Like it's the only issue is every, it, it really is an art. So these mm -hmm. nurses, some are amazing. Others are just like bucket and just, <laughs> and they're like scramble your brains. I've had to do these weird tests where they do this one where they jam, jam it down your throat and like rub that kind of, you know, that back oh. part where your, na your yeah. nasal is and then take it out and put it in your nose, which I don't Ew. understand. I'm like, exactly. Mm. So I'm like, mm, fantastic. <laughs> so and you're having like these normal nose. conversations with the <laughs> nurses as well. You know, it's just like a yeah. regular day, you know, jam. But at least they didn't put it in your nose and then in your mouth because that would have been worse. <laughs> That would would be worse, definitely. <laughs> so I'm just glad they haven't got that uh, the anal one. I don't know. There's I don't know if you've heard about this one. Yeah, what? Well, I have heard about that one. Yeah, uh, I think in, in God China, I think here. they had it. Yes. Why? It, it was, exactly. Is there COVID in your bum? No. I, no, I don't know. <laughs> just get. Uh, it's more accurate. So yeah. I heard that. I think it, it was. Um, no. I think it was a bunch of people from Japan were going there and they were given it, if I remember hearing that correctly. Yes, it was in the news cycle for a little bit, but maybe they realized it was a really bad idea and hopefully that is not happening anymore. I, but, I'll just yeah. do my nose. <laughs> yeah. yeah, oh, it's it's wild. It's because uh, there is a lot of people out there that have never had a test. And it's just yeah. like, yeah, I I think everyone out there should experience it once. So we're I've all only on the same it page. Once. Yeah, so, but. Ah, the new normal. What are you going to do? Yep. I haven't had the throat one. I've I've definitely, like, every time I've had it done in the nose, it's, it's yeah, like, like you said, it's always been different. Sometimes it goes, they go, like, further than you wish, and sometimes yes. they spin it around. Sometimes It all depends on the person. And, yeah, yeah. sometimes it's like, it's, oh, that, that was fine. Other times I'm like, ah. but I, I haven't had the, uh, I haven't had the, in the throat yeah, yet. Well, I've seen ones, too, where the nurses, like, they have kind of had get joy out of it you know, make me a little uncomfortable. So, yeah. but that's so interesting. Bad. It's so bad. All so. depends who you get. All depends <sighs> who you get. Yeah. But yeah, like you said that's the new normal. Oh, good morning. My, my dad's in the chat. Happy Thanksgiving kids. Have a great show. Thanks dad. Thank you. Happy and, Thanksgiving. Uh, oh. Happy Thanksgiving Did to all your viewers you? as well out there. Oh, yes. If they're Canadian, I'm, it sounds like <laughs> you have a, a wide array all over the place. Yes, all of you. And uh, oh, and my mom's here. Also, I should say, mom, it's my mom's birthday today. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday. Mom. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I will. Uh, I will see you later today. I'll see you later today. But uh, have Aww. a wonderful day. I, I miss our studio because we could actually greet your mom a happy birthday in person because she's always there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we we so before the pandemic, we were doing this show in person. So actually, what was interesting is we started doing it online. So then suddenly we could interview people who were outside of the city mm -hmm. but but now so that, but today in this case you we would actually we could actually interview you in person so one of these days we'll make that happen. we should have talked about this on instagram what's going on i know you were i run these, instagram uh, but we talked I... about clothes but we you know we could have <laughs> really shown up in red i would i got red I... pants on right now so it's... are they pajama bottoms Maybe. are they plaid <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Scott and I even, haven't even seen each other in person in a few mm. months. So. Oh, wow. Where yeah. do you like where do you live in the city? We don't live far from each other. Well, yeah, and, and you and you have I don't live, I don't live far from the studio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Regine's closer to the studio than than we are. Yeah, you know, living. Yeah. But yeah, so the only time we've actually seen each other is when I when I'm either picking something up or dropping something off from her place, and we've just basically stood on the front lawn for a few minutes. Just that's like, about it. There you go. OK, bye. <laughs> so. Nice. But yeah, so things are starting. I mean, I actually think we're not that far away from maybe starting to move towards in person again. 
then like because now we're we're at a pretty high vaccination rate. I know in Ontario, definitely like over over eighty percent. And the yeah, numbers have been and the numbers have been staying low. So I, I think oh you should. Oh my god! Yeah, today on the news. Okay, sorry. Breaking news on CP twenty four this morning CP24. was CP twenty four. It was like dun dun dun. Breaking news: five hundred yeah. cases of COVID. I'm like, really? That's nothing. That is <laughs> yeah. nothing. Like that's right. not breaking news anymore. It isn't. Yeah, I'm just happy that it's kind of sitting, kind of in that neighborhood now. Yeah, so and those could be just cases like with people at home, like they get tested and send in their results, kind of thing. And yep. yeah, I, I think we're going in the right season. direction. So. Yeah, yeah, and it's also, I mean, yeah, and, and the cases still. I mean, they're, it's overwhelmingly still the people that are not vaccinated, which sits in the, about under twenty percent of people. So, so we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see what happens. We'll see so. exactly. So next time, Courtney's on our show it will be in person yes I'm of in. that i'm sure yeah it's fun man we'll do we, it. there's one thing i mean like i'm i'm happy that we've been able to switch to online because otherwise we couldn't do it at all and there are things about it that i like and everything but the in-person it really does it's just it just lifts it all up another level mm -hmm. you know so definitely yeah that's yeah. that human contact it creates a, an incredible energy so yeah, yeah. I mean, it's I don't so... leave the house, so don't worry, Scott. <laughs> you leave the yeah, house well, no, more it's... than I do. We're good. Yeah. That's the thing. I actually think it would probably be fine. Anyways, I don't know. It's we'll happening. It, out. it will happen. I'm doing it. If you guys yeah. at least go for a walk, I feel like I'm like in couples <laughs> counseling here. All right. I can't believe you guys haven't seen each other. Let's make this happen. That's true. Yeah, exactly. we, you, yeah, it's true. We, we could even just hang out one time. Yeah. Like out, like a outdoors. normal person. That's that's what we do. We <laughs> hang out with each other. So Wait, especially if we like each do. other. Wait what is hanging out? What is that? I haven't done that in crazy. There's like three extroverts on this show right now. What's hanging out with yeah, people? What is, <laughs> so. what is that? Oh, one thing I did want to ask you about. Actually, there's yes. many things I want to ask you about. Wait, but I, 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 I want to ask. I want to ask one question. Okay, you ask you. Sure. You ask Regine. Sorry, what is that pillow behind you? Because it's very distracting. Oh, oh yeah, I have. Okay, so uh, <laughs> this is uh, my Pee Wee Herman pillow. Oh yeah, love it. <laughs> so it's this fantastic uh, down at uh, I think it's CB two. It's Queen of Bathurst area. Yeah. The they make uh, there's a store right beside it, and I wish I could remember. My wife is good with this stuff. My memory okay. sometimes is terrible, but I remember a great product, and. They make these pop culture pillows. Uh, you can order them online, but I got one of Freddie Mercury. Cool. Here. Awesome. It's really cool. I, all I see are these like random pillows. I'm like, I need oh, to ask you. My house is yeah, filled with them. I got a little Bruce Lee action going <laughs> oh my on God, here. That's amazing. So this one in the back over here is a, a new one, Dolly Parton. Oh, I so, love. Yeah, I saw that one too. Yeah, that one's a, that one's a lot of fun. I've got uh, I've got Prince. Oh my God, Prince your pillows are better awesome. than the ones we had in the studio. We oh had man, I love these stuff. pillows and they're <laughs> like reasonably priced. I'm, I'm going to like buy every pillow she makes. So once, uh, and, and she usually comes out with a couple new ones each year. This one's a little Bowie. So you got nice. Ziggy Stardust Bowie and then you got Young Bowie mm -hmm. kind of thing. Bowie. That's and cool. Oh my God, how more. many pillows do you have? I got uh, Amy Winehouse right nice. here. Yeah. And then yeah, I think I think you've gone through all my pillows. Uh, oh my god. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, the I other just... ones are just boring like uh the bay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, those are those are cool. I just saw like little characters in the corner of my screen. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> yeah, this is this is my happy zone. So awesome. my my it. whole house is kind of full of color and it's definitely pop culture inspired. Love it. What I like doing is I'm a collager, which mm. your audience might get a kick out of this. So I, anytime I'm on a, a set, especially if I stand in and do a whole show, um, I'll take photos of all the days that I have participated, something. And mm -hmm. I put together a collage at the end of the show and I've been doing this for 14 years now. 
So my house is like covered in these kind of collage moments from my life. Cause I feel like when I'm older, I'm going to really appreciate, you know, remembering things because I find now because we use our phones to take photos, it just sits on your phone or on your uh, hard drive and yeah. you never look at the stuff. So like, sure. that's the one thing I love about Facebook with like, when you get the memories, you know, five years ago, you posted this and you get kind of like, mm -hmm. oh, that was really cool. Or, oh my God, what the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> but, uh, I wear that? <laughs> I'm going to show you one. Hang on. Let me, uh, he's cool. actually wearing pants. <laughs> okay. So see, I had pants on. So. I, I literally said that I realized you didn't have your headphones anymore. <laughs> I was yeah. like, he's got pants on. I got pants on. Okay, so this is something oh, I've cool. done. It's like, I know you're getting a reflection, but it's this okay. is my last We're show. in the collage. <laughs> you're in the collage. So this is uh, from Reacher. So this show that's coming out, I took all these like just random snaps. That's cool. Of that cool. the different things we shot and just kind of collage it in. There's probably about 150 images, you know, somewhere in this thing. So I, and I have them all over my house of all these different shows, as well as just like, I'll do it for trips and things like that. So that's, that's kind of awesome. my little, my little hobby. So cool. Yeah. That's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. It's fun. It's fun. I highly recommend it. It's relaxing too. It's interesting when you, and when you actually get photos sent to you and then you start to cut and paste, mm -hmm. all of a sudden two hours goes by and you're like, hey, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't like leave. I was like, it's almost done. I need to finish yeah. this. That's so. awesome. awesome. Instead yeah. of scrapbooking, you do collaging. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like that because like you said, like, yeah, I mean, it's normal. You take a bunch of pictures on your phone and then they kind of, you're right. They just kind of live in the phone. Yeah. And a lot of times you never see them again, but 100%. this way you're actually using it and making art out of it. And also like, you're going to, yeah, you'll be able to walk around your house and look at the walk down the hall and be like, Oh, look at that. Yes. I remember it's interesting that. interesting to see the change in your age. That's the <laughs> thing I know. Cause I had this one, like I've been married for about 14 years and I did a big collage uh, from our, our wedding. And you just, you, you see it in your eye. Like I'm, I'm 47 and I'm, you know, you don't you look, look 47. Just well, thank saying. you. Sorry. I appreciate it. So, <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's, uh, it's, you see it though. You definitely see the, the, the change in your face. Uh, and yeah, it's cool. It, it makes you feel like you've lived, lived some mm -hmm. life. So, and, uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting getting older. I like getting older. I don't know about you guys. Do you enjoy getting older? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not at that part yet. I You're mean, there it. are there are things that I. I mean, one thing I do like is that I can. I feel like I'm wiser in that I look back at stuff that I thought was important when I was like younger, mm -hmm. and I'm like, no, I really was not. You know, I was. I was not incorrect but i had my priorities were misplaced and i like i like being able to see that so having perspective is good mm -hmm. definitely in fact, in fact i was the other day I, I i can't remember if it came out of a dream but like i i woke up and i think at the time i was somewhere in the dream or like it was something where like you know there's always that idea like oh if you could go back to high school and do it all again you do it you know what i mean but mm -hmm. I can't remember if the dream was me thinking about doing that, but for whatever it was, when I woke up, I was suddenly like, like th thinking about it almost as if it was something I could actually do. So maybe in the dream, it was something that I could actually do. But because of that, I found myself waking up and like thinking really about it being like, oh, I bet I could go back and I could change this oh, and do no. this, right? I was thinking about it, but then the more I thought about it, the more I was like, actually, nah, I don't know if I, there isn't that much that I would even want to because I would be worried about like, you know, when you mess with the time travel thing, you ruin one thing, then it, exactly. it changes where you are, right? And I think, no, like, even the stuff I think back if I made a mistake or like there was something that I wish I'd done differently, it's like, mm -hmm. I learned from it, from that, you know what I mean? Definitely. And, I, and I'm kind of here now because of that, so it's... Uh, I, so actually, I, I you know. think about that a lot, especially uh, with school. Uh, I found like during my early days of university, mm. like I chose my university for the wrong reason. 
<laughs> at the time, it made sense. I, I went to McMaster University、uh, in Hamilton, and、mm-hmm. uh, I did their film program. But the the reason I I went there is I was recruited by the swim team. But、oh. I was mostly really going. I grew up in a really small town. This place called Lakefield, outside of Peterborough, which is a couple hours north of here. <laughs>、yeah. uh, I grew up like in a. Was, the town was two thousand people, but we grew up at a, a a private school called Lakefield College, which it was,、mm. it was a really bizarre kind of upbringing. My dad was a teacher there, so we were also, and he was also a housemaster. So we lived in we lived in the、wow. dorms. So there was eighty、oh. kids. In their dorms, and then we had our kind of residence attached to it. So the the idea was that you know if they had issues, you know they come to my dad. So my dad was like the surrogate father to all these billionaire rich kids that went to the school. Because、wow. like at the time too, he went there.、Uh, Prince Andrew went there. The Prince of Spain, different celebrities, titans of industry, just kind of a really bizarre. Like if you saw、That's、where the school、cool. is and like who actually went there and. It's just it didn't make sense, but it made sense.、Mm-hmm. So,、um, yeah, it's、uh, I the I'm trying to think what I was I was going on a tangent about this, but getting back to my the schooling, I wish I could have done things a little differently. I、mm-hmm. I rushed out of this small town to go to Hamilton and just be with friends, an experience, but you know, being in film. And drama. It was more theory. I didn't really get into what I wanted to do until after school. Moving、mm-hmm. to Toronto, you start acting. You start realizing what you kind of want to do, which for me was writing and directing, and kind of building from there. But at the same, I felt like I was building from scratch. I didn't learn anything really at school. I、mm-hmm. just kind of th- started working in the industry and started learning then. So I think the point of my story was. You know that would be the thing. I'd be curious to go back and if I could get a little more out of the the school experience,、uh, would that have? How would that have altered my career up to now? But、mm-hmm. again, the ripple effect stuff and、mm-hmm. Back to the Future and all that <laughs> shit. That. Yeah, it's probably not a good idea. Let's not mess with time. Yeah. yeah, you never know what you might change. Although I actually thinking about yeah, my university experience is kind of. Similar in that, yeah, like filmmaking is all I've ever wanted to do, but I didn't study that, and I wonder. That is one thing I thought of, like what you just said. It's like if I had chosen to like go to film school, even though what's interesting is I spoke to some people who were going to film school, and、mm-hmm. a lot of them were like, "I wish I didn't go to film school and just took all the money I spent and just used it to make a film." Yeah,、like、interesting. But there's, I, I just know that there are certain things that I feel like. I would have not had to spend a lot of time figuring out if there had been somebody at, if I'd gone to school and them teaching me it. So that is one thing I have thought of because、yeah. I'm similar. Like I studied humanities, which humanities, oh yes, which is just like it's like nothing. It's like nothing. But but <laughs> it, totally, it was interesting, you know.、Yeah. But I, I I you know. Anyways, I I get it. I get it.、Yeah. It would have been it. Yeah, it's.、Um, I like the idea of like maybe it's just. It looks more romantic、uh, when you watch like kids going to university in a movie and learning stuff about life. And、mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I think I learned some stuff. I, I think I learned some stuff, even though I have no idea where my degree is. It's crazy. <laughs> like when I I owed the money after I graduated. Yeah. So they let me go to graduation and they gave me the envelope. But inside the envelope wasn't the degree. It was a bill for four thousand dollars. Oh. When you pay this, we'll give you your degree. I did、What? end up paying them, but I have no like in a move or whatever. It's been lost,、oh、so I have an、God. honors BA in film and drama from McMaster University. And if I want to get my degree, you I have to pay to, for it. Yeah, which I'm good. I don't. I'm not that excited to pay for that piece of paper. I could、That's... probably make something on Canva. Yeah, I, really, I was gonna say. Yeah. So, but that's crazy. It is wild. So, and I think of what I paid then and what people are paying now.、Hmm. Nuts. Because、yeah. I went to school. Yeah, that was like ninety. I think I was ninety four. I did four years and five. So it was like ninety four to ninety nine. And then I I was commuting for the last couple because I I lived in Hamilton for a little bit and then I moved to Toronto to kind of pursue. 
acting and then things were starting to go and then you start building a, you know, a bit of a life friends all that kind of stuff so and the commute's not too bad you go to school a few days a week other than the couch i had to sleep on oh my god Ooh. it was so dirty I, <laughs> the friends i was uh they were amazing but they were slobs so it was like uh. typical college house <laughs> yeah. like like a bomb went off in the living room oh, no. and that was your you know where you were sleeping for a few days but I don't know. You're early twenties. You don't give a fuck. So it's yeah. great. Yeah, that's uh. In fact, that's one thing actually. So I went to York University, okay. which which is in Toronto. So because mm -hmm. of that, I I just lived at home, like at my parents' place. And that is one thing I wonder if I would have enjoyed university more, if because for me university was just class. You know, yeah. like I, mm -hmm. I, I get York up. York is I not go, a party school. It's not. No. Well, I, and like, I, there's some bars there, right? And I remember mm -hmm. I hung out at those a couple times. But the thing is, it's, it was so far. Like the commute was, from where my parents were, it was like over an hour. Like I have to. So, so my entire university was experience was like, wake up, take the bus like an hour, the sixty F or whatever it was, all the way to York University, go to a class, and then just get on the bus and go home. And so like I ma I made a few friends, but I didn't. I don't feel like I got that like the university mm. or the college experience yeah. that you get so you know it was just kind of that's because you went to york there's nothing wrong with york okay but york's like, actually like they're like a film program they actually have a good film for program. academics it's great but for social life not so great no no yeah it like was, i um... i went to george brown so i was downtown all the time so i had the college college experience but I'm moving myself into another room because my uh, com computer is warning me that it is going to okay, fall asleep no problem. soon. We're getting a whole tour of his. Yeah. I know. See, <laughs> this is this is my office. We just painted. It's got kind nice. of like this orange <laughs> feel to it. Very oh. nice. Very calming. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and now oh, he's could cut we lose him for a second? Well, why don't we why don't we do um he'll, he'll come back i think but let's do the uh let's do the ad break quickly and then we'll get him back in here um yeah ad break ladies and gentlemen today's episode of the sit down was brought to you by some very important people right regine mm -hmm. yes they are of course our ad advertisers hey regine <laughs> yes scott do you want to find out what your home is really worth Maybe. Are you buying, selling, investing, or renting a home? Yeah. Then Jennifer <laughs> C., Realtor at Home Life Culture Link, is here to help. Call or text Jennifer today at 647 403 8887. Don't deal with just anyone. Speak to a professional, Jennifer C., at Home Life Culture Link. To see her current listings, visit homelifeculturelink.com. The Mortgage Godfather is here to give you advice with any mortgage needs you may have, and he will shop to find you the best mortgage. Nino Saimeka, mortgage agent. I'll give you an offer you can't refuse. Find out more at mortgagegodfather.ca or call 905-604-6955. Jewelry Forever. Conveniently located at CF Markville Shopping Center on 5000 Highway 7 East Markham. They do custom-made jewelry, repairs, and change watch batteries all done on site. And we have an amazing deal worked out with them, don't we, Regine? We do. If you go in and let them know that Scott and Regine sent you, you'll get 15% off your entire purchase. That's right. 15% off. 1-5%. Jerry at Jewelry Forever is an absolute artist. If you have a vision for something custom a beautiful piece he is the man to create it for you or they have a fine selection of other of already manufactured goods as well find out more at jewelryforever.ca and get 15 percent off when you mention the show mm -hmm. and if you would like to advertise on the show it's very easy right regina it's simple all you guys have to do is email us at radio show ad that's radio show ad at gmail.com that's right we do this show live every week everybody and we do these ads live every week. What does that mean? It means that you can personalize them week to week. Do you have an event, a sale, or something happening at a particular time and particular place? You let us know. We let your potential client base know in real time. It's an amazing way to build a brand new relationship 
with a brand new audience. Get in touch. Radio show AD. Radio show ad at gmail.com. And we're back. I did get a message. Uh, His phone died. I mean, his computer died. So it's rebooting. (laughs) No problem. We will get him back in a moment. Um, Once again, happy Thanksgiving. And I think I missed a few people. Elizabeth Paul. Good morning. Hello. Welcome to the show. Jellyfish is here. Good morning, Jellyfish. Hello. And uh, were there any other names I wanted to make sure? If I missed you, I'm sorry, but good morning. Hi. Hi, hi. Hi, 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 hi. Happy Thanksgiving once again to all of our Canadian viewers. Yes. I can't believe we're already at Thanksgiving. Sorry. Go ahead. I know. Oh, I was just going to say also, um, it's my mom's birthday today, but uh, earlier in the week, um, it was my Lola's birthday as well. She Happy turned, uh, birthday. Yeah, she turned 90, 92 years old. Wow. So, good. so for so, those who don't know what Lola is, it's grandmother. Uh, grandmother in, 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 in the Filipino, yeah, yeah Tagalog. But uh, happy, happy, happy birthday again, Lola. Um, love you very much. And um, And uh, once again, happy birthday, mom. I'll see you later today. Is your grandma uh, in town? She is. She is. Oh, yes. nice. She's uh she got back recently because obviously she for the longest time obviously she wasn't able to travel because of of this thing we're dealing with, but mm-hmm. uh, now she uh, now she is. Oh, did you hear? Well, um, we mentioned the Bay earlier, and then I thought about it. But did you hear that the uh, the Canadian Team Canada Olympic s- stuff is not going to be made by the Bay again this year? No way. Yeah, they've been um. They've been replaced by Lululemon. <clears throat> is Lululemon even Canadian? Yeah, they're based in Vancouver. Oh, actually, fun fact: the Bay is no longer Canadian, so that makes sense. Really? Yeah, they got bought out. <clears throat> excuse me, they got bought out by a, an American company. So that's why, mm. if you look at like Hudson's Bay, it's it's okay. Oh. If you look at Hudson's Bay, it's part of Saks Fifth Avenue because they were bought out. Oh no, I thought the Bay. I think the Bay bought Saks Fifth no, Avenue. No, the Bay is no longer Canadian. Interesting. All right, hang on. Let me get. Let me get. Uh, let me get Courtney back in here. Boop, 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 boop. Fun fact. Because um, well, I did my internship with Kleinfeld, which is attached to Hudson Bay, so I was there when the ship. Happened. All right. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Back. Welcome back. Yeah, uh, actually, it, it worked perfectly when you're when you disconnected. We just um, we did our ad read while you were while you were away, so it kind of worked out perfectly. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, no, so, I was just trying to make it dramatic, you know. For yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I got it. Yeah, it was, so all, everything's planned, guys. Nothing on uh, nothing on this show. Yeah, right? we we were like, okay, we we had we had a rehearsal beforehand. We were like, okay, so around the ad break, I want you to pick up your computer and walk across, and, and that'll kill be your you know, computer. add some <laughs> drama. Well, and this is why I like never do these things in this room because I feel like my lighting in here sucks. I, I need to figure that out. And it's, it's weird. We, we bought two computers and I don't know if any of your viewers have these issues, but I have an older, the one I'm on right now is an older uh, MacBook. Uh, but they put better cameras in the older versions of the MacBook so oh but the battery like I, that's crazy like i literally had a full battery when i hooked up with you guys 40 minutes that thing done i used the other computer to last for like you know four to five hours so the battery mm. life's amazing but then the camera lens sucks huh. so it's they're probably trying to get you to buy more cameras to hook up and like yeah. I don't know. We have all these like wacky ports now, like stuff that doesn't plug into, you know, you got to get an extension yeah. of another extension. They put all yeah. of the ca- good camera quality into their phones. That's probably what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Something. But I, like, I, doesn't I the 13 and the 12 have like three different cameras? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like they're the 13 now has got like this cinematic Cinema, uh, yeah, I've been yeah, seeing that. version. So it's supposed to be, yeah, feel like a real mm-hmm. cinema experience. Uh, the video. Like I have the twelve, that. and I'm just like, I don't really use a second camera. <laughs> I just use one. Yeah, I have a, I have an eleven Pro, uh, and it's great. And we do, we'll use it for kind of like more corporate-y because it mm-hmm. shoots in four K. Uh, you know, sit down stuff makes it easy. 
uh, to film on that. But uh, yeah, I'm very curious. Like by the time I'm ready for my new phone, what what technology will be? And one of these days, I'm going to film a movie on a phone just out of curiosity to see, you know, what you can kind of put together. So the movement is great, but. You have all these other issues with lenses and you know yeah in the in the ads for the cinema mode it looks like when they show the phone it looks like they've mounted some kind of little sort of lens mount yeah lens that's good gives you a little bit more i guess you can get some more i don't know control over it i guess i guess but it would be yeah. it would be interesting to see yeah because if the, if the sensor is good enough and it shoots in high resolution i mean it can be it can be done so. definitely i i rely on very smart camera people that I like to hire for the for that kind of stuff. I'll focus on the writing, the story, the direction, and uh, you know it, it can be a hit or miss situation with these people you hire. But uh, when you get a great person that knows what they're doing, so I need to get a great iPhone camera person that knows that shit inside and out. So yeah, but. Uh, yeah, it'd be exciting to explore and try. I might try it a little bit on this uh, my new project that I'm going to be shooting uh, in 2022. So I'm just kind of working through the script. We're doing a, a mockumentary on uh, it's kind of like a Christopher Guest style movie. It's called Allmark, and it's uh, basically mm -hmm. the behind the scenes look at making a Hallmark movie. Nice. So yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. So cool. Coming yeah. soon, ladies and gentlemen. Coming <laughs> soon. In Coming fact, speaking soon. speaking of uh, of films, I did want to ask you about. Uh, tell us a little bit about the because we met at, at Gen Con. Yes. And and uh, so I'll tell us a little bit about the uh, the film that you were uh, promoting at uh, Gen Con. Well, at Gen Con, what I was promoting it was it's more than a, a film. I'm kind of more approaching it as a series. So mm -hmm. what we've done is we've shot kind of a, a proof of concept. Uh, as well as uh, we have an audio version. This year I've been focusing on this audio channel that's uh, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud. It's called the Admit One Radio Hour. But this is part of the content to kind of pitch this channel. And it was called uh, The Puppet from Planet H. And it sounds as retarded as the title. So it's... Night at the Roxbury meets Encino Man meets dance music chaos. Like it's all gone Pete Tong. We basically follow these two dreamers, Axel and Nate, as they're trying to make it big in the dance music scene. And when we catch them at the beginning of the story, you know, they're kind of, they're broke. They don't know what's happening. The music they've created is just not connecting. And all of a sudden, this alien life form crashes in a park right beside their building. And they decide to go check it out. And what they don't realize, it is actually a UFO. And in Superman 1 type style, this puppet was launched from Planet House Music, which is Planet H, to save their you know, species and <laughs> oh. life form and, three, you know, ended up crash landing in our world. And our puppet, like he looks like a sock puppet. <laughs> All he can say is H, but Grand when shop. he says H, Axel and Nate, for whatever reason, can understand him. So it's almost like a he'll go H and they'll be like, oh, and it'd be like this whole diatribe conversation of stuff but huh. uh this alien life form essentially brings back that essence of music and what is kind of that missing piece to make these two a success and then there's an underlying story of space force has been tracking uh this alien life form and and this kind of he has this power. So, you know, obviously the government want to harness this power and use it for evil. But you can't make house music evil. House music's all about love, all about happiness, all about, you know, feeling good. And Axel and Nate become the kind of caretakers to this little puppet. So 
Actually, you know what? Hang on one second. I got something. And more show and tell. Okay. Do you have a puppet? <laughs> I, 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 I want to see this film. I never got to see it very Gen Con. Okay. But it sounds so, thrilling. This is H. Oh. <laughs> Please use the puppet. H. Anyways. Yeah. yeah. It's that retarded. I know you're you're putting images in your mind going, what is this show? I need to watch it. Yeah, but, that's exactly so it. What I'm saying is you can get a little piece of it right now. I haven't released the visual episodes, but we're right now on uh, episode two on the audio channel, the Admit One Radio Hour. And you can get to know H and Axel and their awesome original music. Uh, you can find it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, all that kind of stuff. But look up the puppet from Planet H. Puppet, uh, puppet. Is that a good uh, plug? Yeah. All right. That's awesome. So, the, the puppet that's, from Planet H. That is what I was promoting when we got together. I know I have these like elaborate answers for what what's kind of no, happening perfect. here with props and all that fun stuff so. love show and tell yeah show and tell. why not right so but yeah it's a lot of fun it's a comedy i'm a big comedy guy uh i find i do comedies i do horrors uh or dark dramas uh i find a lot of my stuff that i like to create is all about uh characters finding their identity in some capacity uh, I think that's kind of, yeah, I was thinking, I was looking at my work in general, just as before we kind of came on the, the show, just to kind of, you know, give yourself a refresher of kind of what you've been up to. And yeah, that, that seems to be the common thread. I think all, all my stories are kind of pushing this, find your identity, rise and, you know, figure, figure things out. So. Very yeah. cool. Um, so people check it out, look it up. The it's called the puppet from planet H that's this on, on Spotify as well. The audio version. Yeah. Yeah. If you look up the channel, the admit one radio hour, you can find this programming. So, uh, it's, uh, all spelled out a D M I T O N E, uh, radio hour. So on that channel, you'll feel, find the, the puppet from planet H. We have this other one, a ponytail, uh, ravage and, uh, this dark drama called the actor. And right now I'm also kind of doing a bit of the festival scene with uh, Ravage and uh, the actor as well. So those kind of three projects are kind of floating around uh, the festival scene right now as we get them ready to pitch in the new year. So hopefully, you know, we'll be able to take them to the next level. But uh, it's a lot of work, you know, putting putting together these series Bibles and yeah. concepts, but uh, it's a lot of fun a lot of fun and it's crazy what you can do with like a, a smaller amount of people because you i'll work on these big sets and you got like 80 100 people doing every little role and then mm -hmm. you get like a group of four or five people together and uh you come up with some fun stuff that actually works looks like you spent money and yeah it's uh it's great awesome. I'm curious what uh so what prompted you to um focus more on on audio kind of like these sounds like more like radio plays as opposed to uh, as opposed to video the, i have always looked at audio even with like you know video stuff as such an important element that can make or break a story you know uh so when the pandemic hit I was able to shoot a couple things, but it just became a lot easier because I wanted to make more content and kind of make make it quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wrote these scripts, reached out to you know my my circle of acting friends, uh, and we just started recording. So I'd have some people come over to the house, some people would just do it remotely, uh, and just send me the files. And yeah, I just. I've always, I remember when I was a kid listening to uh, Star Wars on mm -hmm. CBC, like on radio, like City. Oh, wow. It was like early, oh. like late 70s. And you still felt the entire experience. You'd already seen it at the theater, but like it's interesting that you can just listen to it. And if the sound effects are right, everything feels, you can feel the movement, you can feel that. 
uh, I just, I, I love that experience and, and podcasts now seem to get, be getting a little more, you know, interest. People are kind of going back to that medium. So I thought it would be a great, you know, a little project to start. Um, it ended up being a very big project, <laughs> but I work with a few sound mixers and obviously my community of, of actors and we're, and we're building content, we're building stories. So this year was, I was like, I'm focused on getting at least four episodes done of these four stories, you know, by January and we're, you know, on track nice. to doing that. And then, you know, I'll go back to filming other things and, you know, explore, you know, hopefully pitching audible and, you know, finding an audience, but we've been, you know, we've been, people seem to be responding. We we're getting a, a, a decent following and people enjoy it. And I I'm loving putting these things together and, uh, and I think we're getting better at it. So it's been, it's been fun. Very cool. And actually it's a good tip you mentioned for people, um, who are getting into filmmaking or just YouTube content creation. Um, in a lot of ways, the audio is almost more important than video. Like if you have it, to it compromise on, yeah, if you have to compromise on one or the other, because like you can get a crystal clear picture, but if the audio is bad, it doesn't look like a, it doesn't feel like you're watching a real film. Yeah. But if the if the picture's like a little bit less, but the audio is there, get away with a lot of things. So. 100%, and we're definitely, we're pushing the, we're pushing the line. So uh, yeah. with the audio experience, but it's been really cool. I highly recommend if, if you enjoy that kind of radio play uh, scenario to come visit us over at the admit one radio hour. So I promise to entertain. I promise. <laughs> cool. Search it up people. And uh, I think I've got links in the description. Let me make sure if it's there. I put, all right, I've got, oh, I've got the admin admin one YouTube channel there and, yes. um, and Instagram, Facebook, and then the website as well. Okay. So. Well, why don't I, yeah, yeah. You, you can find it on those things, but, um, maybe I'll send you a link just to, to add to those links. Yeah. Cool. Uh, for the admit one radio hour. So yeah. Sounds nice. good. That's awesome. Check it out. People radio play. In fact, it sounds, sounds really fun. I want to check those things out and then here Dude, check it out. Uh, we got to put you in one. So let's, let's do this. Right. <laughs> nice. They're yeah, fun. They're fun. a lot of fun and I might use some dirty language in some of them. So just, just a warning. They might be adult orientated. But All right. noted. That's your warning, people. But but check it out. But check, check it out. out. <laughs> it's a warning, but it's a warning. But fuck it. it. Check it yeah. out. <laughs> exactly. A um, disclaimer. That's all. Yeah, we're um we're going to wrap up soon. But I did want to ask just because I think you're the first person I've talked to who is um who's worked in stunts. I was just curious. How did you start getting into stunts? And it just see. I mean, I'm always such a, so in awe of stunt people and i just kind of i'm in awe of you know. stunt people because i there's definitely the crazy amazing stunt people that i sit and watch do stuff that i'm like holy shit but how i got into it randomly was yeah. uh the stunt guy didn't show up and i was standing in and they're like hey you want to <laughs> tackle that guy through a thing and i was like yeah <laughs> and uh yeah i did it on uh on a show called rookie blue and it wasn't oh. uh wasn't anything crazy yeah. but uh yeah it was it was a lot of fun and that those kind of things uh you know the adrenaline got you yeah it, it does and i i just you know your limits like there's definitely things i will not do because it's not because it, a simple thing even i i did a stunt on in the tall grass uh, for Patrick Wilson. Again, another weird scenario. They didn't have enough guys and I was standing in for him and, you know, yeah, I, I had to tackle one of the actors, uh, through this kind of man-made cornfield that they had put in the studio, but he's running at full speed. I have to kind of catch him go, but like we did it a few times and our knees, like a simple thing, our knees hit really hard Ooh. when we did it. And like at a huge bruise on my knees for, for weeks. But you think of it, it's just, it was such a simple stunt. It's like, you're just tackling someone into some pads through like a cornfield, but like the easiest thing can go wrong, you know? Yeah. And like, yeah. I was, I was limping for a week because like the impact was hard. 
Yeah. And I can you know, when you just like, you just hit like in the exact way that you shouldn't hit. And that was kind of what we did. But uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I'm trying to limit uh, what I do now and mm -hmm. uh, just be safe. <laughs> so, what but, is the craziest stunt that you've ever done? Uh, I've, the craziest thing is I've fallen down a few stairs. I, I would say is something I I've done and you just throw yourself down the stairs. A little, yeah, a little bit. It's kind of like uh, it wasn't like a. It was only like four stair, like a four stair thing. But the the character has to kind of fall back, grab the railing, kind of roll down, and uh, yeah, I almost landed on my melon. And I yeah, again, oh. these simple simple things that uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Do not I, try I, that. At I home. don't think I'll be doing that one again. So, yeah. but there's these guys that'll like fall down like, like a couple floors of stairs and like throwing themselves down and making it really dramatic. And I'm just like, oh my God. And then just get up, you know, brush themselves off. And it's like uh, all in the, on the day's work. But usually you wear like, uh, they have this uh, thing that protects your spine. It's like a pad mm -hmm. that we'd put on. So it almost feels like a turtle shell a little bit, but you know, it's, it's low enough that uh, your shirt covers it and then uh that kind of protects your back so you don't again, quite feel just, every step yeah 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 but still and, the impact yeah the impact and then sometimes too you get like if it's like a staged fight and accidentally the actor punches you in the face and you just have to go kind of, okay let's go you know yeah. <laughs> oh, but man. uh yeah little weird things like that like they leave marks but uh you know they don't break things That's so to speak so that's a that's amazing though because i mean i guess you know the thing is it's funny you're telling me that story and like it is very similar because a lot of people when i talk to them any part of the film industry i guess the, so much of it is like you don't almost you can never know where you'll end up or how you'll end up where you'll end up because you meet this person somewhere and so the yeah. way you're telling me how you got into stunts was just like yeah you know i was on set and the there's some, show up you can go and you can do like they they you know if you're serious about it they, they have these kind of uh, mentorship type programs So you, but I, I find that the stunt community is like, they have these teams and everybody kind of sticks to their team. So you have a stunt coordinator who mm -hmm. basically will recruit people, you know, all shapes and sizes, male, female, you know, cause you need a variety to figure out who can double mm -hmm. for who. Yeah. And you be, it, it's wild sometimes when you see what, what double is and what the actor actually is. <laughs> They do not look alike, but expectations you versus reality. But exactly. <laughs> what but you, you never... ordered off of Wish, what you actually got. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, but they make it work. You know, you cut, 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 cut. You know, and uh, movie magic, movie magic. So awesome. Yeah. That is, uh, yeah, that's really cool. And hey, you know, what I mean, well, I just saw you leaping over an LAPD car. <sighs> Crazy stuff. <laughs> crazy stuff so but uh yeah a lot of fun highly recommend mm -hmm. people that love Want. to do crazy shit <laughs> <laughs> so really really cool yeah all right so so um uh i wanted to get you to um uh we should get you to plug all of your social media stuff um sure. so that if anybody can find it and um yeah so where can people find you Okay, where they can find me? Instagram, uh, I'm under Admit One Productions. Uh, at Admit One Productions, uh, my name will pop up underneath it, Courtney James. Um, you can find uh, me at Admit One Productions Canada on Facebook, or just okay. come find me directly. To be honest, if if you're interested, I I don't mind talking to people. You can message me and all that kind of stuff uh, under Courtney James and I'm rocking a beard in my profile photo. And uh, these projects I'm talking about are on Facebook. They have fan pages and things. Uh, Ravage, uh, the Fursona Files, which is part of this the ponytail story that's on the Emit One Radio Hour. I guess if you just go and check out Emit One Productions Canada or Emit One Productions, there's stuff there. You'll find links. You'll see kind of what I'm up to. And, you know, we can awesome. go from there. Very cool. Links are in the description, guys. And um, yeah. if you're watching this after the fact, there's also going to be a link that he's going to send me for uh, 
Which I'll go do Mint One Radio the, Hour. At Mint One Radio Hour, exactly. Yeah, and you had the yeah Mint One Presents is my YouTube channel. So, cool. but I think you already have that listed. Yep, that's there. Yeah, yeah, I've got uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and the website are all there right now. Beautiful. Soon to be added the Admit One Radio Hour directly. So I'll add Excellent. Shortly. Thank cool. you, Re Regine. Where can people find you? You guys can find me on my YouTube channel every Wednesday for the pageant sit down at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Link is in the description. If you'd like to follow my pageant journey, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Mrs. Galaxy Southern Canada 2022. Um, or you can just follow my Instagram and Facebook and Twitter at It's Regina Lena. Scott, where can they find you? You can find me right here where you're watching this very video, youtube.com slash Scott Dion Brown. Uh, you can also find me on Twitch and DLive also with Scott Dion Brown. YouTube is the best one because you don't just get the live streams, you also get all the other content, vlogs, unboxings, comedy sketches, music, lots of stuff. Please check out my latest song cover, uh, cover of Vance Joy's song, I'm With You. I covered that at my cousin's wedding and I liked it so much, so I recorded a version for YouTube. So find it, youtube.com slash Scott Dion Brown. You can also find, follow me here on Instagram and Twitter. But YouTube is the best place. Uh, Courtney, this was great. Yes. Thank you so much for being our guest. Thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun. I look forward to doing it again in person. In person. In person. <laughs> like, yeah, that's the thing. One thing I remember, the in-person, we always used to do this thing called the Barrel of Monkeys World Championship. Are you familiar with the game Barrel of Monkeys? I am. I haven't played it in a while, so I need a little refresher. But I, I haven't know played it in a while either. <laughs> monkeys hanging from each other, <laughs> exactly, and they're in a barrel. Yes, in a barrel. We used to have every every guest would come on and do a round of Barrel of Monkeys, and we would keep track of who could get the most monkeys. And we had like this whole thing going that we had to stop because obviously you couldn't play Barrel of Monkeys over over Zoom or whatever. But but uh, we got to get you in on that as well. So I'm we'll in. make that happen. I'm in. Let's we'll do it. it. So All right. can you beat the tie? Let's see. We'll see. Let's we'll think so. see. Uh, do you think, Regine, when we start it again, we'll have to start over? Or we, should we still carry over all the old scores? I guess we probably should carry them over, right? I mean, it's been a while. No, but... I think we should start over. Oh, so, so start from zero. Because if you think about it, if we do go back into studio, it would be like at year three, right? So... So new a new year, season. new season, new scores. All right, fine. You've heard it here first, people. <laughs> when Barrel of Monkeys Championships comes back, it's Stay all tuned. new. It's yes. all new. All right. I'm sure okay. there'll be some people who will be happy because some people only have two. So. That's true. Some people did <laughs> terrible, uh, comedically <laughs> awful at Barrel of Monkeys. Like uh, so bad that I didn't think it was possible to only pick up that few monkeys, but it made for entertaining. It made for an entertaining show. So we have a oh. guest. Oh, we did. What are you? What's, I don't know. <laughs> Stay. He wants. He wants to I play know, Barrel he, of Monkeys as well. He does. <laughs> he does. All right. Well, hey, maybe he'll maybe he'll be on the next show in person too. Who knows? There you go. Know. He's not much of a talker unless you know what's kind of going on. So yeah. we'll see. We'll Very translate. few people will understand. Very few people <laughs> yes. will understand. But it could be still exactly. Yeah. He'll be okay, our everybody. Next guest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Happy Thanksgiving once again, uh, everybody. Happy Enjoy this happy long weekend. Yep. Thank you and, for uh, having me. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much. Us. This was a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Um, by the way, there won't be a show next week because I'm going to be in Vancouver. And I, I don't think, I don't know how reliable the internet situation will be where I am. So I get a day happens, off. No, Virginia gets a day off. If it happens, <laughs> if we can make it happen, but I, I, it's probably at this point, probably not. So Don't two weeks from it. now, we'll see you guys for the next episode. And uh, everybody, bye. Bye.